Well, it does appear we're going to have some debate on the floor of the National Assembly, the Senate, and the House of Reps, just listening to uh, some of them giving their opinion there. But we're now joined by Honorable Mark Gila, who is a Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Petroleum Resources uh, Upstream. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much, Chamberlain. Well, we've got this on our hands now. People arguing back and forth about this uh, to remove subsidy or not, or even to fully deregulate or be liberalization. Got all sorts of phraseologies to describe mm -hmm. this one. What do you think of this? Okay, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Thank you, Suleiman Nieto. It's nice to be on your show. You're welcome. Uh, let me put this on record, first of all. I'm not holding brief for my committee or for the House. I'm speaking as a Nigerian, first of all, and a stakeholder in these issues. Now, it's important that we break this conversation down to the basic facts, because our countrymen, Nigerians, are too confused about the high falutin language we use a lot of time to discuss these issues. What are the basic facts? Now, these are the things we need to highlight very importantly, and I want to appeal I saw the passion of which uh, comrade <laughs> Peter also spoke. I want to appeal to the greatest Nigerian students, our comrades, the civil society, and all Nigerians to try to understand what the issues are. We are spending money we borrow to subsidize fuel. Just one product out of the retinue of products that we have from crude oil. Is it not important that we sit down and ask ourselves what benefit has that brought to the country over time? We're spending a lot of money that we can channel to other avenues of the economy that can provide immediate palliative solutions to the country just to subsidize a product. Now, it's important that we understand some fundamental facts. Subsidy, like you and I know, maybe some Nigerians out there don't know, means the cost of landing the fuel is subsidized by the government because it's higher than what we're selling for. So the government is paying that part of it. That means we're taking money we should channel to other areas to fund the subsidy. And this subsidy is benefiting a little, let me use the term, cabal of individuals. The majority of Nigerians don't know what they lose from not having those funds available. Now, the manner in which this has been announced probably is what is raising the hue and cry because people are fundamentally still battling with the petrol shortages and then this has been announced at this period. But the important thing we need to face and agree is we have to, at some point, address the issue of deregulation. Now, this administration has been brave enough to confront this issue headlong. I commend Mr. President, I commend the minister for trying to immediately tackle these issues before our economy is further compounded by the amounts we're spending for subsidy. If, if I may come in here, is it about the manner of announcement or the timing? I mean, if you listen to Honorable um, Ozoyesan, he talked about the repercussions of this announcement. I mean, just one product is being subsidized. Yes. But that one product's price being changed has affected a retinue of other products other commodities. Yes. I'll give you a quick example. A basket of tomatoes that used to go for about 3,500 is almost 40,000 naira yes. from one day of announcement. Was yes. that thought through? Now, now let, me, let me point this out. Now, you see, one of the things we're going to try to explore in this dispensation, especially in the Eighth Assembly, is the best avenues for dialogue. That is why we're currently having sectoral debates with stakeholders in different facets of the economy. And the ministers themselves are participating in these sectoral debates so that we can discuss specifically 
the issues in all these areas. The House should publicize that so people can know more about it. Well, it has been on, I'm surprised that you don't know this, and this is where we, let me quickly say, we, we appeal to, the, to the fourth district of the realm. We need your cooperation in some of the issues that hinge on the fortunes of our country. I appeal to the chairman of channels to look at how these things can also be brought to the fore for Nigerians to be able to watch. I know your costs of transmission is there to be considered, but you can also consider certain things that are important for Nigerians as a corporate social responsibility. But sometimes, let me just digress. Stuff. Yes, I understand. Anyway, that's because, why we but, have our because, me, there. Yes, well, so let me just, that's just, you know, an addition, a little digression. Now, let me point this out now. What, this is a catch-22 situation, the cart before the horse. What would Labour prefer? That we keep the subsidy and keep having lack of resources to provide for their members or should we deregulate the sector and have more jobs but this is the member a, the, this is not the, the, the deregulation other, sorry this is not really a deregulation yes now that is where as a person now remember i said i'm not yes. holding <laughs> yeah. brief for the house now that is where as a person i think and i'm speaking to my constituency and nigerians we should be brave enough to know that we need to go the whole hog and deregulate. That's full deregulation. Full deregulation. Because the benefits we stand to gain are much more than these immediate inconveniences and pain that we seem to want to suffer. If you go to an average, the other ex oil expert that spoke earlier spoke about the US. If you go to Houston, right, you have nodding donkeys in people's backyards. These are drilling equipment that are drilling crude, and anybody can come and collect the crude and refine and sell in their closest market. The government has no involvement in the sector, and it is a thriving economy. There are jobs that are created, a proliferation of jobs. Are you advocating we adopt the same model? Yes, I'm looking at the fact that once we deregulate, we need to make refining as easy, let me use this term, you know, as opening a beer parlor. We have too many bureaucratic processes, and this is where I want to start to advise the government. You see, there are a lot of us in the Congress that hope this administration will realize that we're all working towards one goal. There needs to be a lot of consultation. The executive alone is not a repository of knowledge. That's why in other developed climbs, the...